everyone welcome back to spectrum classes today in this video we are going to discuss about the topic viscosity and this topic is very very important from the students point of view and they find it difficult to understand so here we are going to discuss this topic in simple and easy manner please watch this video till the end so let's start with the topic viscosity since flow is the characteristic property of liquids and here i'll show you an example in this figure suppose this is a narrow glass tube and uh, liquid is flowing through this tube and this type of flow which i have represented here is known as laminar flow now the question comes what is called laminar flow laminar flow is also known as a streamline flow flow smooth flow over a surface in which the path of individual particles do not cross so this point is important and the path of the individual particle do not cross fluid speed at the surface is approximately zero it means the fluid which is in contact with the surface of the glass tube is zero fluid moves in theoretical layers or laminates with increased speed away from the surface so here what you see it is these are the theoretical layers and uh, they are having increased speed as we are moving away from this glass surface frictional drag is produced by the friction between successive layers of fluid so this is what frictional drag so i'll explain it in the next slide you can understand in this manner also suppose this is the glass tube again and fluid is flowing through this so the layer which is immediately in contact here which is represented by this red this layer is immediately in contact with the glass tube right and this layer is seems to be stationary this is one of the property of the laminar flow and as we are moving away from this surface velocity of the successive layer increases here you can see therefore a velocity gradient is set up so what is called velocity gradient so velocity gradient if this is suppose as direction x and this suppose as direction z so the velocity gradient here is dv upon dz so what is dv v is the velocity and g is the distance as we are moving away from this stationary layer since the layers are very much in contact and their velocity is changing slightly therefore the velocity gradient is represented in this d means a small change here you may have a question what is called gradient so this velocity gradient is that the layer which is upside this layer is moving suppose with the velocity v and the layer above this is moving with the velocity v plus dv upon dz so it moves little faster speed than the previous layer so that is why there is a setup of gradient of velocity you can also understand the velocity drag how this happens here suppose we are having this is a glass tube again and in this glass tube we are having layer 1 and layer 2 and in these layers we are having some particles if suppose layer 1 is moving fastly and layer 2 is moving slowly if this molecule which is present in the fastly moving layer which is to the layer 2 which is slowly moving it transports the momentum to the layer 2 and since this is fastly moving so it accelerates the movement of the layer 2 if suppose this layer is moving slowly and the molecule is also moving slowly and if this molecule switches to the layer 1 then it retards the velocity of the layer 1 so this is how frictional drag is present please remind this this is not the case in the laminar flow the path of the molecules will not change right or will not be crossed so this is not the property of the laminar flow 
but here you can relate this example to understand this viscosity now i'll elaborate it further so the layer as i told you earlier this layer is seems to be stationary because this is in contact with the glass surface some of you may have the question why this layer seems to be stationary it can be explained on the basis of this example this layer is in contact with the glass surface and the molecules of the glass surface are stationary they do not provide any kind of acceleration to the molecules of the fluid in this present in this layer and therefore they have zero acceleration and if acceleration is zero then the force is also zero f is equal to m a and if acceleration is zero the force is also zero at this layer therefore if force is not experienced by this layer then this layer seems to be stationary and as we are moving up velocity gradient is set up and this velocity gradient is defined in terms of dv upon dg so dg is the distance and v is the velocity and here further you can understand in this manner suppose i am having a layer suppose this is the layer 1 and we are taking this layer as layer 2 with the surface area a suppose this layer is moving with the velocity v the upper layers as i mentioned here as we are moving upside the velocity of the successive layer increases and here this is with high speed so as we are moving up 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 the velocity increases or velocity gradient is set up and this velocity gradient is defined as dv upon dg if the distance between these two layers is suppose r what will be the velocity? velocity of this upper layer so velocity of this layer will be v plus dv upon dg into r here i have written also so this layer moves little faster than the previous one okay now you may also have a question if we are moving away from the surface velocity increases and here i have again shown velocity decreases because this is again in the contact of a stationary layer so that is why as we are moving away from this layer the velocity increases so from either side you can see this equation right this is two, two dimensional picture you can also see this in the three dimension here i will show you the lab activity related to this viscosity so here you can better understand the viscosity of different fluids and how the gradient is set up so this activity is done with the distilled water and the honey here i am just pouring the honey here you can see the flow of crystal water how fastly it is moving and the velocity of this honey is very less as compared to the distilled water so and that is just because of the resistance provided by the layers of the fluids the layers of honey will provide more resistance more friction to the layers as compared to the water so honey is more viscous Secondly, here you can see the velocity gradient as we are moving upside, the liquid is moving little faster. So, the gradient is developed. So, to maintain the velocity gradient, an external force F along the x axis needs to be applied, and that force is proportional to the area of the surface which comes in contact A and the velocity gradient. So, this force F is proportional to A is the surface area which is in contact with each other dv upon dg or the velocity gradient. If we remove the proportionality point, then we have this proportionality constant eta. This F force is equal to minus eta a dv upon dg so here a is the surface area this is the velocity gradient and this is the proportionality constant eta this proportionality constant is known as coefficient of viscosity and here this equation is also known as newton's law of viscosity here the significance of this negative sign is that this is the fastest moving layer and the viscous force is moving in the opposite direction so this negative sign represents the 
opposite direction of the viscous force. So, as I told you that this molecule, if moves to the second layer, it increases its speed since it transforms the momentum. While the molecule which is present in the slower moving layer, that decreases the speed of the layer 1 or fastly moving layer. Again, you can understand this is fast moving layer and this is slow moving layer. On this fast moving layer, the slow moving layer is applied because force in the opposite direction. Now, those fluids which follow this Newton's law of viscosity, those are known as laminar fluids and those fluids which do not follow the Newton's law of viscosity, they are termed as turbulent flow. So now laminar flow we have already discussed in the first slide and uh, what is called turbulent flow, those flows which are irregular with, with eddies and whirls causing fluid to move in different directions. In the laminar flow, they do not cross the path but here they can move in any direction. So that is the difference between the laminar flow and the turbulent flow. And for this turbulent flow, frictional drag and pressure drag both increases as speed increases. So there we have discussed about the frictional drag only. And those fluids are known as Newtonian fluids in which coefficient of viscosity is independent of the velocity gradient. And non-Newtonian liquids are those liquids in which the viscosity coefficient is changed with velocity gradient. We are going to discuss about the coefficient of viscosity. So here coefficient of viscosity is equal to F upon A divided by velocity gradient. And if we put the units of all these terms in this formula, then we will have the unit of this coefficient of viscosity, which is known as poise. So here we are having the value of F on A Newton per meter square divided by this velocity. Velocity is meter per second and this G, G is the distance. So this is in meters and when we calculate this then we will get Newton seconds per meter square. In SI system Newton seconds per meter square or Pascal seconds is the SI unit for this coefficient of viscosity and uh, in CGS system this coefficient of viscosity is having unit centipoise and here uh, one more thing which I bring to your notice, this coefficient of viscosity is also defined in terms of shear stress. Means as we know, P is equal to F upon A, here P is the pressure, F is the tangential force and A is the area. So this is the pressure, it is also known as shear stress. The reverse of this coefficient of viscosity is also known as fluidity. So here we can define viscosity as the resistance that one part of a liquid flowing with one velocity offers to another part of the liquid flowing with different velocity. So you can relate with this or the laminar layers which I have shown in my previous slide. In other terms, you can also define the term viscosity as the force of friction between two layers of a liquid moving past one another with different velocities. So in either manner you can define the term viscosity. Now we can also define the term coefficient of viscosity. So this coefficient of viscosity of a fluid is equal to the pressure. Here, here is the pressure equal to the pressure requires which will increase the velocity gradient of second inverse. So this is how we can define the term viscosity and coefficient of viscosity. So the terms which we have discussed in this video are the term viscosity, second is coefficient of viscosity which is represented by eta, the next term is viscosity index. Viscosity is of two types, one is dynamic viscosity and second is kinematic viscosity. So these three terms and the numerical based on this vis viscosity index we have already discussed in the Redwood Viscometer video. So I will give the link of that video in the description box. Okay. In the next video we are going to discuss about the effect of temperature and pressure on the viscosity of a fluid. I hope you will understand the concept which has been discussed in this video. If you find this video useful, please subscribe my channel, give me a thumbs up. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.